So we are going to talk about the determinant of a matrix and how it relates to inverses and the linear dependence of vectors. As such, I've worn my XYZ plane shirt for this video. Now, to start off, we're going to talk about one way to think about matrices, which is that we look at the columns of a matrix as representing where the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 get moved when we apply the matrix. When we use this model, it allows us to think of every point, say 3, negative 1, as a combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. Therefore, when we look at what happens to 3, negative 1 when it gets transformed, instead of looking at this point by itself, we think of it as these vectors and look at a combination of these two vectors after they're transformed. So in this case, we would get 3 of the transformed 1, 0 vector, and then we would get negative 1 of the transformed 0, 1 vector. And so our point 3, negative 1 would end up getting moved down here. Since every vector in the xy plane, such as 3, negative 1, can always be written as a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, we can think about every single point in the xy plane applying this process, where we think about it as these two vectors and then look at how they get changed. In fact, when we apply a matrix, we can think about the entire plane getting moved and stretched so that we end up with every point at the place where it is transformed to. Now here's a question. Instead of thinking about every point, let's think about a particular square in space and where it ends up over here, just like this. The question is, if we go from this square to this square when we apply our matrix transformation, how much does this square get stretched? How much bigger is it after we apply our matrix than before? And the answer to that question is the determinant. The determinant is defined as the value of how much space gets stretched when we apply a matrix. So that's the definition of a determinant. But the question is, how does this have anything to do with the inverse of a matrix? In order to answer that question, we're going to look at one very specific value for the determinant. If we have some matrix A, the determinant of A, which we denote with these two bars like an absolute value sign, what happens if that determinant equals zero? Well, what that would mean is that this square gets stretched down so that its area is zero. And let's look at an example of where this happens. One, two, two, four, just like this. And the question is, what transformation is this matrix describing? Well, if we take a look at our xy plane, if we start out with our two vectors, 1, 0, and 0, 1, just like this, after we apply this transformation, the vector 1, 0 is going to get moved to the first column vector of the matrix, which ends up being 1, 2, just like that. And the vector 0, 1 is going to get moved to the second column, which is 2, 4. Notice that these two vectors are both along the same line. What that means is that if we think about this square starting out with before our transformation here, after we apply the transformation, this entire square is going to get squished down onto a line, and therefore it's not going to have any area, and therefore we'll have the determinant being 0. Now the important thing here is that, like we said before, every single point in the xy plane, like say the point 1, 2 right here, can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors that both end up on the same line, which means that this point here is also going to end up being on the same line because it's going to end up being a linear combination of our two output vectors. So no matter what point we choose, in the entire xy plane, if our determinant is 0, it's going to get squished down onto the exact same line. So what does that have to do with inverses? Well, in order to answer that, we're going to go back to looking at some old-fashioned functions. Let's start out by looking at f of x equals x squared. So we're going to draw our graph here. This isn't the xy plane like in linear algebra. It's just a graph of what this function looks like. You might have learned in class that if we take a function and we're able to draw a horizontal line through the graph of that function that intersects the function at two points, then we say that the function does not have an inverse. Well, if we're looking at a horizontal line, that means we're asking about a particular y value, or in other words, a particular output value from this function. 
So if our horizontal line that has one particular output value hits the function at two different points, there are two different x values right here that correspond with this particular output, and our x value is our input. So in other words, there are two inputs that correspond to the same output if this horizontal line hits two different points on our graph. What that means is let's say this line right here is y equals 4. And say I ask you, okay, we took this function and we applied it and got the result of 4. What input did we use? And the answer is we don't know because it could have been either x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. In either case, if we square it, we get 4. And that's what this horizontal line is telling us. There are two different inputs that go to the same output. So if we start with the output, there is no way for us to get back to the input. But that's what an inverse function is. If an inverse function exists, then it has to take an output and get to the correct input. So in this case, having one output that corresponds to two or more inputs means that our function cannot have an inverse because we can't get from the output to our input. Now let's go back to looking at matrices. Is there a version of this idea that applies to matrices? Well, if we think about input and output values, then the situation becomes very similar. We want to find the inverse of our original matrix. And what that means is we want to be able to start at some output value and be able to get back to the input that we put into the function originally. And is there a way to do that? Well, let's look at one particular point and see if we can find the input. Say we look at this point right here, and this vector is going to be 1, 2. So how did we get to 1, 2, starting from our original space? Well, one way that we could have gotten to 1, 2 as our output is to use the vector 1, 0 as an input. Because if we apply this matrix 1, 2, 2, 4 to 1, 0, we know that this vector here is going to get moved to 1, 2. So that gives us the right output. But I'm going to propose a different point. What if we take this matrix and multiply it by 3, negative 1? Well, what that means is we're going to get 3 of 1, 2. In other words, we're going to get 3, 6 from our x value. And then for the y value, we're going to get minus 2, 4 because this is negative 1 going to our second column. And what output do we get here? We're going to get 1, 2. In other words, we found two different inputs that got to the exact same output. And the reason that we were able to do this is because these two vectors, our two input vectors, go onto the same line, which means that there's a way to add them together that gets to 0. In other words, if we apply our matrix to the vector 2, negative 1, that's going to get us to 0, 0. Because 2 times 1, 2 is 2, 4. And then we subtract 2, 4, that gets us 0. Which means for any time that we can find an input that gives us the right output, we can just add 2, negative 1 to that input and get the exact same answer. There is no unique input that corresponds to any output we could think of. And because there is no way to get from the output back to the input, this matrix cannot have an inverse. So does this always happen when the determinant is 0? Well, yeah, because when the determinant is 0, we're saying that all of space gets squished onto a line so that this square has no area. But if all the vectors are on the same line, then there's always going to be a way that we can take them and cancel each other out, because they're going to be scalar multiples of each other. For example, 2, 4 is twice 1, 2, which means that these vectors are on the same line. And that means that they're linearly dependent, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Does this apply, for example, in three dimensions? Yes, it's a little bit different, but still very similar. So let's say we want to look at the 3 by 3 matrix, or the three-dimensional matrix, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, negative 3, 0. For this matrix, if we add up the first two columns, we get the second column. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus negative 3 is 0. What that means, if we call this first column v1, second column v2, and the third column v3, then we're going to get that v1 plus v2 is equal to v3. If we subtract v3 from both sides, we get that v1 
plus v2 minus v3 equals 0. This is a linear combination of the column vectors of our matrix because we're taking some constant times the first plus some constant times the second plus some constant times the third. So in the case where we're able to add up these vectors in some way and get to zero, we say that these column vectors are linearly dependent. And when these column vectors are linearly dependent, then there's no way to get from an output back to an input. Because, for example, if we multiply this matrix by 1, 1, negative 1, well, we know v1 plus v2 minus v3 is zero. So our answer here is going to be 0, 0, 0. Of course, this 0 is talking about the 0 vector, not literally the number. But what this is saying is that we again have a vector that we can multiply by this matrix and get 0. So for any output, if we find one input, all we have to do is add this vector, and we get a new input that has the same output. So there's no way to figure out which was the actual input that gave us that output, and therefore this matrix has no inverse. Geometrically, a 3 by 3 determinant is looking at volumes, just like a 2 by 2 determinant will be looking at areas. So if the determinant is 0, rather than the area getting squished onto a one-dimensional line, the 3D volume gets squished onto a two-dimensional plane. And in the case where we have three vectors on a plane, there's always going to be a way to add them together and get to 0. So now we know that for any square matrix A, these three statements are equivalent. The determinant of A equals 0, A inverse does not exist, and the column vectors of A are linearly dependent.